That's a weird noise. That sound is familiar, but I cannot put my thumb on it. Anyway, we're making a chatterbait today. These are sheets of aluminum. As you can see, they are a little thin. That, that's some thin aluminum, but I have nothing else. Let me make sure I have nothing else. I thought I had different, kind of thicker sheets of brass. This is an eighth inch of brass. We're probably not going to use that. I must be going senile. I swear I had it around here somewhere. Where'd you put it, Chelsea? Anyway, so this is a Z-Man chatterbait and this metal, well, honestly, it's not much different. The difference is this is probably a stainless steel and this is an aluminum. All right, fair enough. Hard body chatterbait. This might not work. Just the dynamics of a, a, a real chatterbait where all of the weight is right under that blade, not distributed throughout the bait, but I can still make the lure so all the weight's in the head and put a chatterbait on it loop a big wire through it, treble hooks even on the bottom. Okay, you probably don't get the picture yet, but I'm gonna start drawing. I'll draw you a picture. We're not making a giant one, okay? If I had thicker metal, I might go for a giant one, but okay. Okay. This is one of the first times I like have another bait to go off of. I don't fish with chatter baits a lot. I'm not extremely familiar with them, so it's good that I have this. I pretty much just took it from a friend, so thank you, Nate. It's like a jerk bait, but all the action comes from a chatter. And then all of the weight, like a lot of weight, probably a half inch hole, as much weight as I can possibly stuff in the front of the head is what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I need to do that for a chatter bait, but just to go off of what they normally are and not stray too far from what works. That's what I'm gonna do. Wood. Oh, one day. This is a one day. 10, 30, eight. Is that the exact same time I started last videos one day? 10, wasn't it 10, 38 or was it 10, 28? I think it was 10, 38. Is this a sign that I'm not gonna catch a fish? <laughs> Wood. Ooh, by the way, I got my new airbrush components. I bought a kit that fixes the issue for sure off of a spe like a specialized website. I have my airbrush back. That is good news. For this bait, mm. Mm. for this bait, I have to make the decision of whether or not to use a more buoyant wood and get the, you know, the wood pulling on the back and the weight pulling on the belly stabilization. Or if I just use a dense wood and I want weight and I want this thing to sink hard and I live with less stay. I think I want the weight because it's a chatterbait and it would be cool if it did a lot of this in the body. It chattered along. Hard maple, just like last Monday. Hard maple is what we're using. Same piece of wood even. Ooh, I need to get some tunes going. I can't have them that loud for your terrible reasons. What a shapely, I mean, what? I like the shape of this, is all I was trying to say. Started it out weird, couldn't finish. This bait's going to have a taper. I'm going to leave the head thick, that thick. And then the back is what's gonna taper to the tail. I have to leave the head thick up here because half inch holes are going, like probably two, half inch holes are gonna get filled up with lead and it's all gonna be in the head. You, you already know this. I've, I've described it enough to you. Pencil. Staying in one spot and I'm looking around. Pencil. There you are. That is so much better. I'm glad I realized that. My life has changed. Yes, that looks goofy. What a large head this has, but it's all good. It'll look fine, you'll see. The chamfers are what makes this look fine. Let's carve those. Ooh. My friend Cole, fishing it all on YouTube. Check him out. I'll have a link in the description for Cole's channel. It's gonna be at Jesse's Pond this afternoon. I caught a fish with a chatterbait 
just the other day at Jesse's Pond, that Z-Man I just showed you. So that's probably where I'm gonna go. Rundy. That's exciting. It's always better fishing with friends. By the way, if any of you, you know, you live in the Eastern Iowa area, you know, you got a pond that I could fish. I'm down. Sounds good to me. Just don't murder me. But I would love to fish your pond. So we just got it all smoothed out. Smoothed out. And I'm plugging in my lead pot now. But now that this bait is perfectly shaped, to the way that it will be. I'm going to drill out some lead holes, possibly some eye sockets. If I have 3 8 inch eyes, let me go check really quick. I have these, and I don't think these are appropriate. This is like a 3 16 inch, and I don't have a 3 16 Forstner bit, believe it or not. I have every other size except a 3 16 inch Forstner bit. Or no, that's 5 16 and I have this. Okay, let's see if this drill bit will even work. These are one of the bad ones. It's got a bit of a wobble to it, but it seems manageable. I made some deep, deep eye sockets for this because the drill bit sucks and it makes like a convexed surface on the inside of the socket. So I just make them deep and add extra glue to fix that issue. And I think this will fit just fine. It will be perfect. Lead holes, half inch. Lots of lead. That's what you deal with on this channel. Me having fun with lots of lead. Two of them right next to each other. Probably overlapping. Use a real Forstner bit now. High quality stuff right here. None of that off print <coughs> tool shop crap, you know. None of that stuff. Some of you in my last video thought that my center line ah! on the pole bait was off. It just looks off on camera, guys. I didn't actually make it. Like that probably looks, well, it is off a little bit. Let's bring that back this way. There's no need for you to go back and look at that video and see if it was off. Just trust me, it wasn't off. It's It was on like this one's on. Well, I mean, you can you can look at it forever. You can, you can hem and haw, or you can just make your lure. I tend to just make the lure, okay? Don't go back to that video and look at that. It was on, just trust me, it's on. Oh! Ow! Ouchie. <laughs> I just stabbed myself with this. You see the pokey poke right there? Ouchie. Okay. You ever just grab something and stab yourself with it? I don't, I never intend to, but it happens a lot with me. I just made a noise that sounded like that. No. Why do I even think that this sounds like something? Ooh. I'm losing it. Okay, that is some holage. <laughs> That's gonna be a lot of lead. That could be an ounce right there. Lead. It is time to utilize the power of stencils and draw out, I I'm really looking at what this chatterbait lip style is too, and draw out the chatterbait lip for this. It's not much longer than it is wide, okay. That should be it right there, yes sir connect those two ends. You compensate, like you see things visually, like over here it's not close enough, or it's too close to that dot, and over here is further away. So you just keep that in mind when you're stenciling and bring the stencil closer where it needs to be and then draw your line. You don't have to just go off of what you already drew. You can rebel against yourself. That's not the same. I, I'm strongly considering making up here a lot thinner on my stencil here. I should do that. Let's eyeball some stuff. There we go. That's what I cut on. Boom. So after talking to myself for a couple minutes, we came up with the correct shape. I'm gonna also mark out where the holes belong. See the bait sinks like this, and then there's something under here that pulls the lip up and grab the water, wait at the bottom, and then this happens a lot faster than I'm able to produce with my fingers. So three holes. There are three holes in a chatterbait. One right here, it's under the center line. It's not in the middle. You can put another one right there. And then what connects it to the lead or the body 
is one down low right there. I don't think that matters how low you go, you just need a connection. But the placement of those two holes are probably pretty, oh wow, I'm not on frame. The placement of those two holes are probably pretty important. Time to glue this to a piece of aluminum. And yes, I'm just gonna straight up glue it. It might leave a little bit of residue. Who am I kidding? It will leave some residue. But if I even have to sand it off later, I don't really care. I'll sand, I'll spit shine it. I'll do whatever's necessary. I'm not gonna use a coping saw. I'm not gonna use the band saw. I'm not gonna use a garden hose. I'm gonna use some tin snips to cut this out. Oh, man, I just about fell off my chair again. <laughs> Did you guys see how far that chair tipped over? Woo, that got the adrenaline pumping. I don't wanna fall off of this chair. It's further up off the ground. I just heard a whoosh over there by my lead pot. It's not a good sound. That is not what you want to hear while you got your lead pot rolling. Man, I am snipping like a pro today. Okay, just gonna file these edges clean. That ended up very, very dimensional, very on point. I can't say very straight or anything. I just, it was right on the lines. Ow, geez, just pinched the crap out of my fingers doing a little for you guys. Ouch. Need a punch. I drilled it. A file. I was gonna file first. Ooh. I yeah, just about punched a hole right through it. I'm gonna use something with a little less um. This'll probably be fine. My pokey thing. Give it a thwomp. Ouch. I just tried to grab my pokey thing as it was rolling off the table and it poked me. What do you know? I feel safe just holding this with my fingers. Small piece of aluminum, so. I really have been thinking about safety more. I need to stop that. That is not what this channel is about. Yes, sir. They, they really match. Thank you, Z-Man. So next I need to make a twist wire that is permanently attached to that bottom hole wire. Never mind, my lead pot is making another Mount Leadmore over here. It just doesn't stop dripping, so let's get that back in there. Let's just get this lead poured. Woo! A lot of lead right there. Ow, ow, oh god, ow, oh jeez. Molten lead just dripped on my finger. It's a surprisingly manageable pain when that happens. It hit me right there. It's almost not even as bad as soft plastics. I don't know if it's because the lead conducts heat faster and it dissipates or what. I, I really don't know, but it's more manageable. Anywho, back to the wire. This is a simple process. Bend a piece of wire, put her in the hole. Clamp the tip of the bend, just the tip. The less that you can clamp, but still have it secure, the better. In the vise. After already chucking it up in your drill, the other end. It's a lot easier to put this in your vise after it's chucked up in your drill. Got the tip, right there. You're gonna twist a lot of force onto the tip right there, so you want it tight. There. So there's a twist connection from the chatterbait lip to your bait, right there. And it certainly does not need to be that long. Now, we need to do one of these things. One sec, bend a wire over. And once again, you put the tip of this in your vise. And you give it three wraps. Suppose you could give it two. I think you can even give it one and it's still a very, very strong hold. But we're gonna give it three, be normal. Just do three. Give that a snip. I like to fold these over nicely. I don't like having a sharp thing exposed right there. I just feel like your line might like just nick that and get frayed. And then you got the 10 pound bass on and then you're S-O-L. Super opposite of lucky. So now we need to do the same thing but it has to be attached to the chatterbait lip the whole time. This is the trickier thing. You see what they got on the Z-Man? They attached it but it's just one wrap and it's not even all the way wrapped around on the Z-Man. I wonder if that's just hardened wire or what, but I'm gonna try to give it some wraps and snip it off. The bend has to be a certain length. Also, I'm going to copy the Z-Man, putting them together like that, 
taking my thumb. Where my nasty thumb thumbnail is, is where the bend's gotta be. I'm gonna bend it up the same direction. Oh, it don't really matter. It's all crooked on the Z-Man, so it, it doesn't matter. So I need it like that. Oh, oh, I'm having mental spatial difficulties. How do they, how do they do that? Oh, they have a really big hole and they have it just long enough and then they wrap it. How can I do this though? I don't wanna have to do all that. I just want this attached. So yeah, the trick would have been to do this part first and then do this afterwards. Close your eyes, people, this might get ugly. I can't do that. I have to restart. Lesson learned. That is how I needed to start this. So I could actually have this attached in here. Get this wrapped. I want it loose still. I want the lip to be able to have some play in it. So there'll be action to this bait. I'm just gonna do two wraps with that because it is very secure. Oh, this is actually a lot easier. I'll just judge the distance right there where my nasty middle fingernail is. Now my index finger on my other hand. Bend this up and over and around, loop-de-loop-de-loop, -loop -loop and voila. It's a lot easier when you have the loop actually clamped in a vise, and then you can twist the wire around that. It's tighter too, it just works better. There's fancy wire bending jigs and stuff, but I've never used one. There, that's on there. Get in there, enough to do a snip. Chatterbait hardware, done. Not too bad. We're finally to the part that you guys are even watching this video for. Super glue and baking soda. Gotta cover that lead hole. <laughs> Good morning. You wanna kill any infectious viruses in your nose? Any of you interested in that, I recommend super glue. Really feels like it does the job. Look at how bottom heavy that is. That's gonna stay upright and sink hard. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Make sure you don't file the lead, people. Make sure you're just filing on the super glue and baking soda mixture. Dusty lead has never been of benefit to anybody in this world. That could be the name of a band. I'm sure it already exists, but you're welcome, whoever takes that name. Dusty lead. <laughs> Okay, got the pilot holes drilled out, got the lead put in the bait, lead holes covered, eye sockets drilled, everything's ready. Got to cover this in super glue, seal the wood, and we're ready to paint. Actually, I should probably add the hardware, the two hook hangers. Sometimes I really have a brain fart like that. It's like I've been doing this for years and years and years, and it's just completely wrong about something. I'm not going to add the, the chatter part of this yet, just, just the two hook hangers. Of course, duh. And I was in such a hurry, I... Didn't record any of that, and here they are. Twist wire stuff, just like the chatterbait lip, but just glued into the pilot holes. That's all that that is. You know, you've seen this channel enough. You know exactly what that is. All right. Ooh, okay, okay, calm down. I know it's exciting. Get my airbrush back, exactly how it was before. This is exciting. Where'd that blood come from? Is that still bleeding? All right. I, I believe it is back to its old self. Let's find out. Starting with white, by the way. I have not thought about what to paint for like a single second this entire build. I have no idea. What am I painting? Something natural, because the chatter is going to be not natural but then the bait color should be natural, right? Baby bass, boom. There's a bunch of small bass in this pond too, so it will be natural. All right, green back, moss green. Okay, next up for this bait, I'm gonna airbrush the lateral line. Some parts are thick, some parts are thin. Gotta make it uneven. Alright, it's a good start. I'm gonna come back in with white in some spots and come up into the lateral line and that gives it the black and the white, the highlights and the low lights and it makes it look deeper. There, that looks good. So yeah, basic pattern right there. I'm gonna do some work to this. Oxide, 
on the chin, platinum on the belly, some shines, maybe some color shifts, scales. Scales would probably be good. <laughs> Forgot how much work painting is. Man, I got spoiled. Let's toss some scales on this first. Just gonna put scales over the whole thing. Let's get simple and just do some gold. I just about dropped my airbrush on the floor again, but I caught it. and then just pearl white on the belly. And then I'm gonna hit those scales with a torch. Ruin the mesh, but I don't care because this is a one day. We got fishing to do. <laughs> I don't know why I just throw those clamps as hard as I can at the, at the table when they're <laughs> All right, let's take this mesh off now. The big reveal. I tell you folks, that just went and done did it. But there's more to do. I'm gonna go with a gray top. I need to turn this music down. I'm gonna go with a gray top on the top. But then, over that gray, a color shift paint. Color shift looks good with gray. It's like black and white, you know? <laughs> you know, you know what gray is? You do. Here is my new collection of color shift paints. I'm kind of leaning towards this one for the back of this bass, baby bass. Maritime green, but then there's emerald getaway. Storm surge green, what is that? Let's just go with the, let's just go with this. See what it does, I don't think I've used it yet. Oh, that looks good. It is like purple and green. I'm excited. I'm gonna heat set that and put another layer on. That did a lot. You remember how that was gray. I'm trying to get some green in there for you. Gosh dang it, it doesn't show up on camera. You see that? In person, there's a lot more green. Let me just, I'll just explain it to you that way. <laughs> All right, I forgot to put black around this eye socket. I'm gonna do that and then it's on to gluing on the eyes. I added a bit of an oxide red towards the chin there too. Like I said I was gonna. There it is. I'm gonna put the pointy part of the pupil facing forward. It's just there's more space. Like I like it when the pupil's lower. I might be putting it on backwards, but I'm going to I'm going to face the pointy part back just to have the pupil lower. Makes it look like it the bait fish is looking down. I like that. <laughs> Maybe I'm weird, I don't know. Really had to press that one in, but it's in. Looking delicious. Ready for clear coat. I'm interested to see what that color shift's going to look like with the clear coat because it only helps and it certainly did. My goodness. Now you guys can see the green, right? Like it goes purple to green. Gosh, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna throw a drip wire on this. Hang that up for 10 minutes and it's going in the tank. The tank. I actually have it in the tank already, right there. Been dripping. Bad habit, I know, I just, whatever. It's ready. Lights are on. See you in a half hour. So I got a little anxious and I took it out a little too soon. And by too soon, I just mean I'm able to put thumbprints in it. Not just thumbprints, but fingerprints too. So I put a glove on, solves the issue. Gonna break the epoxy around the tail hook hanger before I just go ripping this out. And it's not epoxy, it's UV cure from Illumilite, is what my clear coat's called. Drill this out a tiny bit more. That was a horrible decision because I just broke off some clear coat and paint, but we're gonna live with it. As you can see, it, that, that was a bad decision. I recommend that you never just do that. And I gotta drill it out more and I'm just gonna do it again. I'm making the stupid decision twice. Okay, that one wasn't as bad. It was still kind of bad, but it wasn't as bad, so. Okay. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay, I need to calm down. I'm getting a little too excited. This lure is too cool. It's too cool to ruin by dropping it on the floor like that and scuffing everything up and making it look ugly. You start getting towards the end of a one day like this and you get excited to fish your bait. I can feel my heart rates up and I'm just too excited. I need to calm down and finish the bait nicely, you know? Where's my accelerator? I think I stabbed myself very, very badly through these gloves. Good thing I have this glove on because I think it's, I think there's some blood in there. Anyway, here's the finished chatterbait. Wooden chatterbait. It's a little dusty. I do apologize. Let me, I'm just gonna clean that off. There is the finished wooden chatterbait. You see the color shift? 
green, purple, green, purple. It looks really good in person. Absolutely stunning. I, I like that paint job. That turned out really well. And of course, we're gonna see how this works. And by now, I don't even care if I catch a fish or not, but by that point, usually I end up catching a fish. So there's a good chance we're gonna catch a fish with this. Let's go. Just glued my hand to the table. Let's go. Looks like Cole's already here. Remember, Fishing It All YouTube channel. Linked below, check him out. He's a good dude. Let's see how this bait works. Uh, wooden chatter bait, hard body. Okay, that's kind of freaking sweet. I haven't, t I'm gonna touch it right now. Sometimes I know they put a little bit of a bend in the front of that lip. Do you hear that? That is freaking You can hear that in my rod. What the heck? Do you hear a that's underwater. That's gonna catch a fish today. <sighs> there has to be a decent thumbnail somewhere in there. You know what it was? What? I snagged this. The last time I snagged it, I didn't take the kink out. Uh, that wasn't even a bird's nest. There's no bird's nest here. It snapped off. I'll try no, it's at the bottom. That thing sunk hard. Whoa! I like the way that looks too. Whoa. Your one days are not going great. I'm gonna make another one. Probably didn't. That was, I like Don't look at me like that. We're in this together. You watched the video up until now and you saw what happened. We're in this together. I don't even know what that means. It just makes me feel better to say that. But I'm 100% certain that was the worst loss. The worst loss of a lure I've ever had on this channel. Popped off first cast, lost it before it even hit the water. First cast. What do we have here? That's right, another wooden chatterbait. With, dare I say, a cooler paint scheme. I did some sweet fading in there. Burnt sienna into tequila yellow with a little bit of black stripage and texture. With the color shift scales, it goes from green to gold on the scales. Same chatterbait blade, about the same length and body style, same weight. Let's try this again. With a better pull, setup, line, 65, or no, this is 50 pound advanced Super braid suffix. Cut this 190 off of here. I was having, I was having a good time yesterday. I got some decent bonus fishing too. Caught some good, like I caught a good fish again. Once again, I caught a good fish. What do you know? I almost don't mind losing that lure since I got such good bonus fishing. But we need to see if we can actually get a fish on the lure that is the purpose of this video. Let's. Uh, I need to salvage some uh, split rings off of a different lure. I have a theory, it might be wrong, but I I have a feeling, this isn't even a theory, this is a feeling, that in the old chatterbait that I popped off, I didn't bend up this end, and on the Z-mans, they, they are bent up. Maybe my line was cut by the blade doing this, and then a tiny little bit of a disturbance in my spool, I used that reel to pull a snag out and I forgot about it and I reeled it in and uh, the braid was set into the spool a little bit right there and that tiny little bit of resistance as I was casting just popped the lure off so I think the line might have been compromised. I just feel like that is the case. Get some hooks on this and get back out there. Same spot. We're gonna get a fish. There's been quite a bit of failure recently this year. It has not been a good start. but good thing my chatterbait works really well. It has a very nice walking action too. Or hunting action is what you call that. The lip is getting a little worn on both sides right there. I might have needed to use aluminum, or er, steel, and not use aluminum. What an oversight. Dang it. We'll see how much longer it lasts.
Oh. Okay, folks. When I'm not meant to catch a fish, I can take a hint. <laughs> what do you even say? There's nothing to say. Roughest video to date so far. Easily. Two baits, both lost. The last bait I only lost because I, I overlooked the lit material. It should not be aluminum. It should be what this most likely is, which is just like stainless steel. That steel wire can rub on that steel for a year and do this and it's not coming off. But with aluminum, it'll come off. We have established that. A chatter lip on the end of a wooden jerkbait style though, works great. I think I wanna try a, a smaller round snubby crankbait kind of style body with a chatter lip. I'm pretty sure you can just put a chatter lip on the nose of anything and it's gonna work that way. It, there might be something where what's required is a lot of weight at the head, but that's it. That's just it. I, I'm excited to move on to something else. I keep forgetting to say bonus fishing when I start bonus fishing. Maybe I did say it this time. I don't know, we'll see. On to the next! What? Yeah. Like I turned on the fan. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Trying to record. Oh, sorry. I'll go back upstairs. No, you're fine. This video just doesn't stop. It's been a rough one. I lost audio on a good portion of the bonus fishing. So enjoy audioless fishing of me and Cole. Actually catching fish. At least we know next video will go better than this. On to the next bait. Enjoy bonus fishing. Sorry to interrupt, Cole. <laughs> You're fine, I guess. I'd rather her not give it to him. Please be a walleye. Please be Stop a walleye. Drag, I doubt it. It's just Ooh. a decent crappie. That is a tank. He was swimming with me. Okay, I'm gonna Snapchat this. How's the shed painting going, Nick? Hope hope you're having a good time. <laughs> Got one. 
on the darker color, it doesn't feel big. But who knows, maybe it's swimming at me and it's a giant. Please be that. No, it's just a dinky bass. Can't always get what you want. Especially when you're fishing. My arm's getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I was laughing too hard. <laughs> they wouldn't have heard you. That's just a bass. That was in the shallows. Bull crap. That was like immediately. It was. 